And now, this is my fourth and final video representing or uh, showcasing an individual um, device adapter by which you can by which a player can connect a video game console's controllers to a PC. And this is a, it is a very special device, uh, unlike the other ones that I showed in the last three video, last three sets of videos, each one showcasing one device. This one does not hook connect to the PC by a USB to, uh, connection, but it does by a parallel port connection, and also to the PC with a uh, five volt power source. So. Um, USB, as you know, you, as you may know, USB 2.0, which is the same shape as the older 1.1, actually draws power from the PC. Well, a parallel port I don't think does, or it does very little. I think it can draw some power. Actually, no, it can draw power, but um, this provides 5 volts. I don't think parallel port can provide 5 volts, because I don't think more, many motherboards uh, support that. And since many motherboards nowadays don't even come with a parallel port, you'll actually have to add a card to your PC to support that. Um, in the older times, actually for many, many years, uh, parallel port was a big standard on PCs. Now it's been phased out, and on my current PC, which I have here, you can see, right in front of us here, um, it actually does not have, its motherboard does not have a parallel port on it. So I had to actually add a card to the PC, which I will show in a few minutes. In the meantime, before I connect this device, since I actually have to open the P open the PC's case up and do some uh, uh, modifications there, I'm going to shut the PC down to be safe. I'm going to showcase this video in the most safe way. So here is my monitor or my keyboard and mouse. If you haven't seen my other videos, I'll turn off the PC. I'm running Windows XP as many of you may recognize here. So I'm going to turn off the computer. And Firefox is asking me to save and quit, so... Save and quit. And that's turning off. In the meantime, I'll describe this device and what this is. This is a very, like I said, it's a special device here. If you see here, it says here, select two players, uh, three to five players, to super play performance. Well, this is not... Unlike the other devices that I showcased, you cannot buy this device. Uh, this is not commercially produced. Now you may say, well, it looks commercially produced. What did you do, make it? Well, not well, somewhat. What this is, actually, this device, is a hacked multi-tap for Super Nintendo. Um, there are various multi-taps for Super Nintendo. Um, the first one, actually, Nintendo didn't make one, to my knowledge. Hudson made the most official one, I guess. They're all made by third-party companies. Like I said, Nintendo did not make a multi-tap, but Hudson did make one, Hudson Soft, and released it in the United States with Super Bomberman. And I had that multi-tap, and I actually took that all apart, too. I hacked that thing, and I gave that to a friend. A friend right now owns that device. But this one is a third-party performance, which is generally a low-quality company. I had actually bought one of their controllers years ago for the Super Nintendo, and it was a piece of junk. Um, this thing may be a piece of junk, it may not. I didn't even care. What this thing was was a shell with ports on it. Meaning that I can take this thing apart. I'm not going to take it apart, and I'm not going to go into how I built this thing. But um, basically there are schematics online. Actually, what I should say is prefaces. Before the days where there was any commercial adapter made to connect a, con a console controller via USB to a PC, the only way to get a controller connected to a PC was either to cut the end off and um, modify the wiring there or build something like this and there were actually I've never seen a schematic for this building this kind of a device but it worked based on the schematic and I kind of figured that out myself but what this device does is it allows a player to plug in and all four you can a player can plug in four Super Nintendo controllers to this device and plug it into the PC via the parallel port to feed the data and this gives it the power. This will draw power from the PC, five volts from the power supply. This is a uh, Molex, actually is it called a yeah, Molex connector and this will draw five volts from the power supply and send it to the, this to, this here to power the controllers. Actually it sends it individually to the, actually it sends it individually to the controllers. 
there is nothing in here but a bunch of wires. It's all wiring. There's no circuit board. I actually took the circuit board out. There's just a big, a big set of wires in here. And I'm not going to take it apart because I don't want to possibly break any of the solder joints or anything in here or damage anything. So I do not want to take this apart at this time. Um, if there's any people interested very much in making one of these, perhaps I will take it apart at that time and discuss how I made this thing. But right now I'm just going to exhibit it. Um, there are wiring diagrams online, and to give you a little history about it, there was something called SNES key. And it's it showed you how you can have this do-it-yourself project and um, wire uh, an individual Super Nintendo controller to the PC, and it showed how you can wire more of them based on the different data port and you can oh actually you know what you do is you'd wire all these control you could wire up to four controllers onto a single that's what it was you could wire up to four controllers onto a single parallel port. Well how do you get four Super Nintendo wires cut cut them up and solder them and solder them into a parallel port it's a parallel um, uh, port. It's really hard to do that. And so what I thought was, I don't want to cut the ends off of Super Nintendo controllers. They're valuable, and so you could really screw them up easily. And um, the actual wire, if you cut them, is not good quality. It's hard to work with. So I thought, well, what's another way I could do it? The first thing I did was, to give you a little history of what I did, was I actually bought four um, extension cords. It's Super Nintendo extension cords. Cut one end off, and left this end, the female end. And so you can plug a controller into the extension. Well, I bought four of them and tried connecting all four to this thing. Well, that was a big failure, but I, I got like one of the controls to work, but it wouldn't work too well, and it was just hard to, hard to solder. So, you know, a few days later, I was just brainstorming. I thought, well, I had that multi-tap by Hudson. Why don't I take that apart, solder the wires to the ends of these, and just use that? And that was my first hack, and that worked great. It, you know, it didn't work perfectly. I ended up redoing the soldering. Um, but it worked pretty well, and it was definitely successful in, in the right direction. Then I made more of these devices, and they just kept getting better and better. Um, and this is the best one that I made. And this one, like I said, draws power right from the motherboard with this. And um, this plugs into the parallel port. So I shut the computer down, and I'm going to show you how to connect this thing. So the first thing what I'm going to do is I'll go to my PC here. And move it around. And the first thing I'm going to do is I always, whenever I open a PC up and make modifications inside, I'm going to unplug the power. Next, I only have one screw holding this side of the case on. I'm going to unscrew this. Set the screw there. Take this panel off. Now, I have this large fan part here. I'm going to disconnect that. I'm going to put the camera down while I disconnect that. This basically just does uh, for these large fans on the side of my case. I like a fa uh, computer with large fans on uh, to prevent overheating of the computer and uh, definitely overheating of the hard drives. These large fans do hit the hard drives. And uh, I do not want data loss due to the hard drives breaking because they were too hot. That would be a big shame. And I got four, these four hard drives here. So, um, Here's inside my PC. You see here the cards. Well, I'm going to just show you the card I had to add to the PC. Here's the back. And here's my video card. And you'll see right below it, right... Let's see if I get the camera in here. This card right below the video card is the parallel port with the 25 pins. I'm going to point to it. Right here, this is the parallel port. That card has the parallel port. This is a sound card here. This is the actual optical audio. I send it to my stereo. I don't mess around with PC speakers. This down here is my video capture card. I capture an um, analog source of VHS with that card. Very, very uh, fun uh, hobby of mine. And very worthwhile to capture old videotapes with this often uh, unique information. Let me shine some light here so you can see inside the PC. Okay. So this card here is the video card. It's no, you know, powerful gaming card or anything, but it's great for emulation. And this right here, this little card all the way in the back, is the parallel port. Just a small, cheap card. You get these cards very cheap. It's a PCI card. It'll work in the, any, you know, current PCs. I'm going to put this camera down. I'm going to get a screwdriver. I'm going to show you why. Okay.
Okay, so I got a Phillips screwdriver. And I'm going to proceed to, if you look at the back of this computer, is I have an empty slot. Well, the question is this here. I'm going to get my adapter to show you why I'm, what I'm going. I'll explain to you why I'm doing it before I do it. Um, I have to, like I had mentioned before, let me shine this here. I have to plug the parallel port and the Molex power connector into the PC. Well, the parallel port is clearly on the outside of the computer. That's going to be easy to connect. And let me point to it with the screwdriver. It's right here. That's the parallel port. Now, where's the Molex connector? How do I get power off this thing? Well, if I look inside the motherboard, or the, inside the case, um, you know, I got one right here. Here's a Molex connector. Well, that's inside the case. How do I get this inside the case and this outside the case? Good question. I'm going to need to somehow either leave this panel off and sling around the side, which I don't want. I want the panel on the computer. Or I can make a hole in the back of the computer. Well, what am I going to do? Drill a hole? Yeah, I could drill it, but why even do that? When I have, if you see here, a, a slot, an empty slot below the sound card, there's just a, a, a bracket, or a plate, I should say, uh, where, there, where I can make a space. So, I'm going to take my screwdriver. Let's see if you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to... Let's see. I need to line it up with this hole. I'm going to unscrew that plate. The screw dropped. Slide the plate out. And now we have a gap. So now I'm going to proceed with connecting this thing. And I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do because it's going to be really hard to hold the camera while I do this. So maybe I can set it down. Let's see. Can I set it somewhere? I do not have a tripod, sadly, so I can't. I don't want this camera to fall. It's a good camera. Okay, got the camera set. All right, you should be able to see what I do now while I do it. So first, I will connect. Let me make sure I got it. The, the greater pin number of pins are at the bottom. So now I got the parallel port connected. And now, this thing's a little short, so it's not going to be able to fit inside the PC, but I can send one out from the PC. So, let me get the camera. And um, I'm going to need this for my fans. I could use this for my fans. I got a lot of dust in this PC. Should blow it out one day. But this I could use for the fans. So this I'll send to the outside. Yeah, I could even use this for the fans. But you see here now I, I sent this Molex connector to the outside of the PC. And so now it's sticking out. Even though it's usually an internal component. Let me set the camera back here. And... I can easily just... Actually, I'll send it over here to this side where the port is. And I'm just going to connect it. I know my hands are in the way here in this video. But I'm just connecting the two Molex connectors together. A very simple procedure. If you've ever connected a... Taken a computer part and connected a CD-ROM, for instance, with a Molex connector, it's similar to that, or if you use only USB now, and, or not USB, um, SATA, it's not any harder, really. Well, it's a little harder because it's not as nicely made, but that's it. That's really all there is to it. You can see now I have the parallel port here. I got the, the power coming around here. Um, from the Now, this is actually connected. This Molex wire uh, plug connects all the way. Let me see if I can trace it through here. See my finger here, it's tracing on the outside of the PC. Around, then it goes up to this. Which goes all the way to the power supply. So, basically the power supply is feeding this thing. And if you read the power supply, it says here, I think this is how to read it. Let's see. 